Batch reactors are preloaded with reactants to undergo processing steps. And then after a certain finite amount of time, then those products are removed from the reactor and then a new batch is preloaded. And then for that final time again, those products are removed. Now this is common where you have maybe smaller or high value production processes especially like chemical and pharmaceutical manufacturer, biofuel production, food and beverage industries, and also agricultural production. So these batch reactors, uh, we're gonna try to optimize this one where we're gonna modify the temperature over this particular time window and try to maximize this product two in the reactor. So we have a reaction, I'll just say A goes to B goes to C. And the desirable reaction, one that we want, is going to be this B. And the reactants are A at the beginning, and the undesirable one is C here at the end. So we want to try to get as much of this B reactant as possible. Now, we've got uh, some equations that relate, that basically help us describe the optimization problem. And just going to erase some of this here so I can write my equations. Okay, so we have some reaction rates that we're going to be tracking. We'll first of all try to maximize, and we're going to maximize x2 at time final. And we're going to do that by adjusting our x and u values. Now u is going to be equal to the temperature. That's going to be our input for this system. And we have a differential equation, dx1 dt equals, and then we're going to have minus reaction rate 1. And reaction rate 1 is right here. Reaction rate 1 is going to be equal to k1 times x1 squared. So uh, we have this first one. This is a is going to be 1. That's our concentration. Uh, first concentration, second concentration, third concentration. So it depends on the concentration of A squared. Now, let's go ahead and write our equation for the next one. So dx2 dt, this is going to be for B, and that's going to be equal to reaction 1 minus reaction 2. Okay, so reaction 2 is going to be this one right here, where reaction 2 is going to be equal to k2, and that's just going to be another constant times x2. So that's a first order reaction, and that's going to control the rate at which b goes to c. All right, and then our third differential equation is going to be dx3 dt equals, and that's going to be equal to reaction 2. So that's going to be how much is produced, the rate of what x3 is produced. Now the one we're trying to maximize is this one, but you see we start to lose it as we start producing more x2. So we want to try to optimize this. We've got a couple rate expressions here, and I'll just write these out as well. k1 is going to be equal to 4,000. Okay, that's our pre-exponential factor. e to the minus 2,500 divided by t. And then our k2 value is going to be equal to uh, 620,000 e to the minus uh, 5,000 divided by t. So you can see here, depending on the temperature, as we move it up or down, we're going to increase or decrease these rates. So we want to preferentially produce B and not produce as much C. Now we're going to start with an uh, initial condition, X1. Initial is going to be equal to 1. And then X2, initial is going to be equal to 0 as well as X3. Okay, all of those are going to be equal to 0. Now I can go somewhere between temperature of 398 to uh, 298. Okay, so plus or minus 50 degrees um, in there, 100 degree range total in Kelvin. 
Okay, so that's my manipulated variable, the thing that I can adjust in order to try to maximize x2 at the final time. So let's go ahead and just write out the equations for this and uh, solve it with Gecko. So I'm first of all going to import NumPy as NP, and then I'll import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt just to visualize the solution and then from gecko we'll import gecko if you don't have gecko just pip install gecko we'll create a new model if you set remote equals false and it solves locally we'll set up our time points so i'm going to set up 501 of those and then we'll linearly space them between zero and one and then we'll have some variables as well x1 x2 and x3. We'll start with an initial condition of 1 for x1 and x2 and x3 will both be equal to 0. Then we're going to have our temperature and that's going to be a manipulated variable and the value can go between 298 and 398. We'll give it an initial guess of 398. We'll turn its status on meaning that the optimizer can adjust it, decost, put that at a low value so it just minimizes any chatter. Then we're going to create some intermediates as well. These are going to be our K1 and K2 values. Okay, that are right there. We've got our two intermediate values. All right, and then we will have uh, the final value here. This is going to be P. I'm going to set it equal to zeros with 501 points. The very last one's going to be equal to one. And we'll set our final parameter basically with zeros everywhere except a one right at the end. And that helps us maximize the amount of X2 at the very end. Then we're gonna create a reaction rate one and a reaction rate two. We'll set those up as intermediates because we use those later multiple places in the equations. And then in the equations, we're gonna set up the first one. This is just gonna be the differential equation for A. And then we'll set up the differential equation for B this is going to be our x2, and that's going to be reaction 1 minus reaction 2. And then our third one, which is reaction, this is going to be the C, the undesirable product, and that equals reaction rate 2. Now let's go ahead and create our objective function, and we want to maximize the final x2 value. So we'll just say maximize x2 times final. So it's 0 everywhere except at the very end. Then we're going to set up I mode equals six. That's our dynamic optimization mode. And I'll set nodes equals three. And then we'll solve it. Okay, so we're almost uh, done here. We're going to just um, print out the solution. That's going to be our final value with four decimal places. And then we'll also create a figure as well with a couple subplots in there too. Okay, we'll go ahead and run this just while it's um, generating this final plot right here. And we'll produce the final results. Um, Okay, so let's just create this final plot. And here I'll just show the final plot just as we're generating it, just to see what we're doing. X1, X2, X3. You can see the rise of X3 here, the red line, the red dashed line. You can also see the temperature profile as well. So we've got um, the three different concentrations of A, B, and C, one, two, and three. And then you can also see the orange dot there. That's our X2 at the very final time. That's the value that we're trying to maximize in the end. Now, you can see here from the solution that that is 0 0.6108, and I just ran it with AP Opt. It had 9,000 variables, 8,500 equations, 500 degrees of freedom. Those are my temperature values. And I ran it with IP Opt, And you can see here the optimal objective was found, and there you can see the optimal solution. Now, sometimes this is confusing when you have a negative there. Uh, that just means that when we 
maximize, we multiply by negative one because we have to convert it to a minimization problem for IPopt. And so that just has a negative value for the maximization. You can see it took about 2.8 seconds to solve this. Okay, so that is the batch solution. If you need the source code for this, let me go ahead and sh show that to you. It's here at this website. And down below, you'll see a problem description along with the results and the solution right here, the solution code. All right, this is uh, solved with the Gecko optimization suite. If you'd like to see other applications of Gecko for mixed integer or optimal control problems or just optimization in general, select this link for Gecko references. You'll see the paper here. This is the Gecko paper where it gives a little bit more details about the algorithms, also the AP monitor paper as well. Um, and then a newer paper here where we've incorporated some of the machine learning packages like TensorFlow and sklearn in with the Gecko package. So it gives a, a couple more methods there that you can use for modeling. And then there are some additional applications here. Uh, you'll see a number of different applications with Gecko. Um, and you can see things like how to high altitude aircraft trajectories, here you can see an energy management system for island microgrid. Uh, here's a hybrid energy sources standalone marine microgrid. Okay, so a few microgrids. You also see things like mosquito population control strategies. All right, or modeling of mammalian cell cultures uh, and many other types of applications. So this framework that we're using for optimization, especially with dynamic optimization, can be used in a, many different applications as well. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this um, application to batch reactors, and I'll put the link to that code in the video description. I'd appreciate any comments or questions that you might have.